Josh, the behind the scenes guy, recently got a vinyl record, super great by the way, link in that music in the description, and it's got this dude with a tiny dingling on it. You see? Teeny weeny dingalini. Linguini. He's size a linguini. Also, huge missed opportunity on the vinyl itself. Look at this. Look, just, oh my word. Look at these shenanigans. Oh my word, why is this hard? Look at this. Look at it. That is huge missed opportunity on the vinyl itself. Look, they could have put the hole over it so when you have the record on the record player that it has a peg that goes in it, it'd have like a little 3D ween. 3D special effects. Ha! It's a penis. But no, instead you just have this flaccid wiener going all around. Ooh. Dinner and a show. Did I just say that? <laughs> well, anyway, old statues and paintings of nude dudes have mini manhoods. Why is that? Well, there's actually some interesting reasonings behind it. The most obvious one, of course, being that they are flaccid. Most of these paintings and statues have guys in situations where sex is the last thing on their mind. They ain't turned on at all. And comparing these to modern day flaccid dongs, they aren't actually that much smaller on average. But still, smaller for sure, technically. Also take note, large protrusions are more likely to break off of most statues, like big noses or long arms that aren't attached anywhere else. But these microgenitals are also seen in paintings, not just statues, so there's got to be a lot more going on. And there actually is an interesting reason for this, as culture has changed a lot since the times of ancient Greece. Think back to that time real quick as if you could remember. But at the time, ancient humans were making several discoveries, scientifically, socially, philosophically, culturally, and so on. And a big part of this was realizing just how intellectual people could be. Physical power was one thing, but mental power, now that will get you places. And as a part of this, lustfulness is a part of the physical, more animal-like characteristics of people. And at the time, that wasn't quite seen as sophisticated and manly. It was all about what was in your hat, not in your trousers. Ancient Greek. As if that's a quote. And this is backed up by viewing the Greek era statues that did have massive dongs, fully expanded. For instance, those of satyrs, mythical creatures who worshipped Dionysus, the god of pleasure. And that's just one example of several. Massive pinors in art and literature at this time were almost always associated with foolishness. It was a sign of little intelligence. You are not a man. You are no more than a lustful animal controlled by your natural desires. But I, Mr. Tiny Wiener, am of high intellect and philosophy, not distracted by my erections. It was culturally seen as superior. So of course, artists' depictions of perfect people would reflect what they saw as perfect at the time. Simple as that. And many more recent, as in the 1500s, sculptors took inspiration from the ancient Greek styles, leading to what is perhaps the most famous example, Michelangelo's David. Though there is some debate about the intent here. Some argue that David is depicted as fearful. I mean, look at his face from the front. And plus, the idea is that he is about to face off against Goliath. Of course he'd be scared. No matter how faithful, human emotions are always present. And typically, whenever you're in fear, your body likes to uh, tuck in its important bits. You know, you gotta save them from any potential danger. Uh, I'm getting flashbacks to a video of a hyena ripping off a zebra's zebra maker. So perhaps David isn't below average when it comes to endowment here. He's just scared. Maybe Goliath looked like a hyena. Well, ah, uh, huh. If you didn't know that already, now you do. You're welcome. And I'm excited to share even more factoids with you here on Azoth University. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more random stuff, uh. And have yourself a wonderful life. With the tiny wheel.